What's up YouTubers, Mr. McRaven here, back again with another video for you boys and girls. Now today's video is in reference to a couple of questions that I received from one of my viewers who watched one of my uh, other videos. And uh, he was building a brand new PC system and he bought a memory kit and he wanted to know how to best set up his memory kit to uh, work in his PC and how to get the most uh, out of that uh, memory. So hopefully in this video what I'm going to be able to explain to you guys and girls out there is how to set up your memory kit to work in your PC. Now if you've bought a brand new memory kit or you're building a new PC from scratch and you're not familiar with how RAM works or what all the, uh, the numbers mean, don't panic because hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a little bit better knowledge as to what it all means and how to set it up and uh, you should be all right as rain. So the first thing to do before we look at the information that's on the screen in front of us is um, let's say you've bought a brand new memory kit, you bought a, a memory kit that's 1600 megahertz in speed and you've installed it in your system, you've installed Windows, you start up Windows uh, and you, uh, you look up the information and you find out that the memory is actually not running at 1600 megahertz, it's running at 1333 megahertz and you think well what the hell, why isn't the memory running at the, uh, the speed that I pay, paid for? And there is a reason for this, uh, I won't go into any great depth, but basically the people that decide the standards of uh, speed, timings, voltages for, for memory uh, have a set standard across all platforms of what memory should be running at. Now of course you've purchased a kit that can run faster than these standards, but uh, in order for, uh, for all memory kits to work and function within a PC, there has to be a certain set amount of standards that they can, uh, that they can all run at without any issues. So what happens is you've installed a new memory kit and the BIOS doesn't know uh, that the memory can run any faster than the standard. So it sets itself at a default standard speed and it should usually be around 13.33 megahertz. So what you need to do is you need to go into your motherboard BIOS and in that BIOS you will find a uh, setting where you can adjust uh, memory uh, speed and timings. Now depending on what motherboard it is you have, if you have a fairly modern modern motherboard, anything from the last five years I would say at least, uh, there should be some profiles in there where you can change the speed from 1333 to 1600, 1866, 2133 or 2400 or even higher than that depending on, on the motherboard you have. If you don't have any profiles in uh, the motherboard uh, that show you speeds like that, you can adjust the speed manually. You'll need to look at your motherboard uh, manual to see how you can adjust that manually, but it should be fairly straightforward. You should be able to set the speed that uh, you, you desire uh, in there. Now the next section will be the timings. Now you can actually uh, set the timings to automatic and uh, no matter what speed you set, it will automatically set a predetermined uh, set of timings that will match the speed that you uh, you set. Or if you really want to, you can input them manually if you know them. If you don't know what they are, they'll be printed either on the side of the, uh, the memory stick themselves, on the packaging, or you can visit the manufacturer's website and they will have uh, all the information as to what timings uh, that that memory kit will require. So that's basically it. You need to just go into the BIOS, select the speed that, you, uh, that your memory kit runs at, tell the timings to go into automatic mode, and uh, make sure that the voltage is uh, set correctly. It'll either be 1.5, 1.6, 1.65, or uh, it could be lower, depending if you have a low, uh, low voltage memory kit uh, as well. So once you're all set there, you should then reboot into Windows and you should find that the memory is then running at the uh, correct speed. Now one of the quite, uh, quite often uh, things I see quite often, shall I say, uh, is that people open up this program here, CPU-Z, and they see that uh, the, the frequency of their RAM is, well, why isn't it running at uh, 2133? I've got a 2133 megahertz uh, memory kit and it's running at 1066. Well, the reason for that is it's called DDR, which is double data rate. But uh, if you divide 2133 in half, it will be 1066. So basically it means that it's double data rate. So if you double this number, it will be 2133. And if we go into the speed settings here, we'll see that uh, we've got an XMP profile here for 1600 megahertz. And you see that the frequency will actually show is 800 megahertz. You double 800, you get 1600. You double 1066, you get 2133 and so on and so forth. So double data rate means uh, double. So whatever number it shows here in CPU-Z, it will actually be running at double that speed. Hopefully that will clear uh, that up. Now in the picture here to the right, 
we have a label that is uh, stuck to the side of a stick of a DDR3 memory and I'm going to go over what all these numbers mean uh, here on this sticker. Now this sticker is, is something that you should find on the uh, side of whatever stick uh, kit of memory that you have. It might not look exactly like this and it might not have all the numbers that are printed here but if they are all there like this uh, then you'll understand what these numbers mean as I go through them. Now and we can see that quite clearly here at the beginning it says DDR3-1333. Now this means it's DDR3 memory and it's running at 1333 megahertz. That's what it's designed to do. Next we have uh, the CL7-7-7-18. Now these four timings represent these four timings here. CAS latency, RAS to CAS delay, RAS precharge and the cycle time. That's what these four numbers mean here and we're going to go through those uh, in a moment. The 1.5V relates to the voltage that the memory kit requires to be run at and uh, just underneath here we see PC3-10666. Now if this was DDR2 memory it would actually say PC2 but this is DDR3 so it says PC3 and then after the dash the numbers 10666. Now depending on which memory kit you have it will have a number similar to this uh, or higher if you have a 1600 megahertz kit and it will be even higher if you have 1866 and so on and so forth. But what this number actually means is a theoretical uh, data transfer rate. So in theory this uh, stick of DDR3 1333 megahertz kit uh, it can transfer theoretically 10,666 megabytes per second but if you uh, can remember that it's double data rate it means in theory it can actually transfer double that so in theory up to 21,000 uh, megabytes per second roughly uh, or thereabouts but it is only a theoretical uh, number. In reality you might find that it runs uh, much faster or a little bit slower than that but in theory that's the amount in uh, megabytes per second it can transfer uh, data around itself. That's uh, as simply as I can really put that. Now the, uh, the timings here in general the lower these four numbers are the better performance you'll get out of the memory. Now you can buy some memory kits that are high performance with low timings. Uh, they generally cost a little bit more than the standard high performance kits but uh, you can get uh, some kits with l lower timings and uh, if it's really imperative that you have the fastest memory uh, that you can then by all means pay that little bit extra and get the, uh, the lower timing version. But uh, in reality most people won't really uh, notice it unless they're using it in a more professional uh, environment. Now we're going to go over each of uh, some of these timings. I wouldn't say we go over each because there are actually a lot more timings involved with memory than what we can see here. But one of the most commonly known one is the CL7 otherwise known as the CAS latency. Now you can see here on this sticker it's got a, C a CAS latency of 7 and in CPU Z here on the left you can see that my memory is running with a CAS latency of 11 clocks. So 7 and 11 they're, they're two quite different uh, numbers and there is a reason for that that the timings are related to the speed of the memory. The faster the memory is running the, uh, the, the higher the number there are of the timings because if you try to run 2133 megahertz memory with the timings of 1333 megahertz memory your computer would just cr constantly crash because it wouldn't be able to handle uh, such low timings. So what do these timings mean in reality and how can I easily explain them to you? Well the CAS latency is the, uh, the amount of time it takes before the memory will begin to execute a command that is given to it by the CPU. So in terms of this picture on the right hand side it has a CAS latency of 7 which means that it will wait 7 clock cycles before it begins to execute the command given to it by the CPU. Now the next timing is the RAS to CAS delay. Now the easiest way to remember RAS to CAS and what it means is rows and columns. Now if you think of your memory as a library full of books with lots of shelves and lots of rows and lots of columns and on each of these columns and rows there are lots of books, you kind of think of it like a library uh, if you like and each book has a 1 or a 0 in it and that's how, uh, how to think of it in a more easy to understand way. So the RASTICAS is a command uh, or, or a clock cycle that refers to a certain row or column within the memory uh, that it has to go to. 
Now, the RAS pre-charge, which is the last one we're really going to look at, uh, that's important. The RAS pre-charge is, uh, if you think of this as uh, telling it what to look for next, to tell it to stop looking within that row and column and to start looking uh, for the next row and column, and that's basically what it means. So to explain it simply, the CPU, let's take this to be the CPU, the CPU will, CPU will send a command to the memory. The memory will wait 11 clock cycles before it begins to execute the command and then it will go to a certain row and column within the memory, find the ones and zeros that it wants, and then it will get this RAS pre-charge, and it will tell it, stop looking in that row and column, now you have that information, and go to the next row and column and get the ones and zeros from there, and then it will send it back to the CPU. The CPU will then repeat that cycle again until it has all the information uh, that it needs. So in a way, memory is kind of like a really big library with uh, lots of books on the shelves and in each book is either one or zero. And uh, so the CPU sends a command out. The CPU is kind of like uh, the reader who's coming to take some books out. He goes to the librarian uh, who is in control of the memory and the librarian goes up and down the shelves and uh, takes off the books, the ones and zeros, and he brings them back to the reader. The reader then goes away and is happy. So basically, the CPU talks to the memory, gets the information it, wa it wants, and it completes the command. And that's basically how it all works. It's fairly simple and straightforward when it's uh, looked at from that perspective. Of course, it is a lot more complicated than that, but uh, you don't really want to get too much into depth of uh, how the memory works in that way, but just basically that's what it means. The cast latency is how long in uh, clock cycles it will wait before it issues the command or does the command. Uh, the raster cast is the rows and columns where the information are stored. The RAS precharge tells it to stop looking at that row and column and move to the next row and column. And then it sends the information back to the CPU. So all these numbers might seem all pretty scary and confusing, but that's basically the rundown of what it all means. Now I hope this video has proved helpful, it's by no means an expert guide, it's just a basic quick explanation of uh, how to set up your memory and how it actually works within the system. Uh, I hope it has proved helpful, if it has click the like button, if you have any questions leave them in the comments box below and I will try to answer them uh, as and when I can. Uh, I've been Mr McRaven and uh, thank you for watching.